why should Tennessee implement load management? Why did that cross your mind, Caleb Calhoun? So I guess we should should we start by because maybe a lot of people don't watch the NBA and are following explaining load management, which okay. is yeah, load management for people who don't know is nowadays, which they didn't do in the nineties, they rest stars and key players over after a period of games to make sure that they're fresh for the playoffs. A lot of people have complained about it, but the truth of the matter is the science is there. You are if you play all eighty two games, you're not as fresh for the playoffs. And if you're not going to do it, but another team's going to do it, you're at a complete disadvantage. That's why the NBA does it. And that's why, by the way, in case you guys forget, in the 90s, the Bulls and Jazz, we all remember those great last-second shots, but those games were usually slugfest and horrible in the playoffs because everybody's legs were drained during that time. And this this started, I think, almost accidentally with Kawhi Leonard because he was banged up one year and he missed a lot of games and he played great in the playoffs. And then he has continued it. So load management, um, to, to clarify, kind of started with Kawhi, and now it's across the board. It's the reason that I haven't – I have to go up north this, this weekend with my son, and it's the reason that I haven't booked or I haven't bought tickets to an NBA game because I'm not 100% sure what players will be there. So I hate it. Um, and LeBron James, if you want to rip LeBron, you can. A lot of people don't like him for various reasons, but he's kind of the one who doesn't do that. That That's a prominent star. A lot of other guys do. So why load management for the basketball balls? So I say load management for the basketball balls because I was up last night thinking how – because we talked yesterday about how their offense has been figured out. And I don't think there's any changes they can do this late in the season to fix that. So I'm thinking what can they do that might give them an advantage from March that would save this slide? And it just kind of hit me load management because nobody's doing that in college basketball. Look, let's, let's take some fact. Let's put some facts down. Tennessee is going to the NCAA tournament. They have the resume. If they lose the rest of their games, they're going to the NCAA tournament. I don't care if they lose out, they'll get in as a 10 or 11 seed at that point. We know the conference tournament does not improve your seeding at all. Now the NCAA doesn't take that into account at all. The only thing they take into account is whether or not you won the tournament to give you an automatic bid. So there's really nothing extra. And we also know Tennessee has no regular season SEC championship to play for anymore. So those three things are beyond clear. Um, Rick Barnes, Tennessee's battled injuries throughout the year. Besides Jordan James, Julian Phillips, a few other guys have just been in and out, have not been quite right. Rick Barnes also grinds his teams a lot. So a lot of times they're kind of mentally drained by this point. I think if you do load management, Sit a couple of guys here, sit a couple of guys there, not really care if you win or lose. You get to the NCAA tournament, who cares if you're a 10 seed? You're fresher than everybody else in the tournament. Now, this doesn't mean rest your starters the whole rest of the season. It means pick a game that they're going to sit, you know, every other game, something like that. So they're still in rhythm when the tournament comes, but they're not mentally drained and they're fresher than anybody else in the tournament. And when March Madness is effectively almost a back-to-back in college basketball, you know, it's a Thursday and then a Saturday, load management could be a huge advantage, and I don't think any team has tried it in college basketball yet. And so this would be a huge cutting-edge thing to do. It would, and I'm going to assume that as part of load management, you're not giving your all for the SEC tournament and you're ready to get the heck out of there, right? You don't want to play four games. Yeah, you don't want to play four games. Back and I, th- I think there have been times where teams, and I think Ron Slay may have alluded to this, where they didn't really take the SEC tournament nearly as seriously, and I don't blame him. To the message board, I get it, but I do dislike it as a fan. Kobe was one player that wouldn't do it, and that was one thing I respected for him. Yes, agreed. But here's the thing, the difference between the NBA and what makes it so dastardly, in my opinion, to the fans, and and – the difference between it and college basketball. Nobody shows up in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, or Auburn, or wherever to see um, Santiago Vescovi play. Nobody's like, oh, I got to see Santiago Vescovi. I've got, I got to get there. So you're not losing a great appeal like being able to see. You know, I went to see the Hawks play, and they were playing the Nets. I wanted to see Kevin Durant and James Harden because they were future Hall of Famers. I wanted my son to see that. And I, I wanted him to see Trey Young as well. So we, we got to go to that. And 
but there that's not like that in college basketball. So it's it's very different. Now, uh, Travis says bye weeks are invaluable in football. That's like 14 days. Basketball is a lot on a body, and they play uh, two times a week. I think he mistyped and said four times a week. Uh, John says, not sure resting our players would really help that much. If they aren't shooting, they aren't shooting. I, I, I'm going to agree more with John than Caleb on that particular point, but I do see where he's going. I do believe that Rick Barnes grinds his team. So second down was what about the SEC tournament? We both already agreed. <laughs> you're you're just going to go ahead and chuck that, right? You, well, okay. Here's what I say with the SEC tournament. Play your starters on Thursday, rest them on Friday. So, you know, they can have a little bit of rhythm. Do some load management, mix them Thursday and Friday. Because the, you want them to stay in rhythm. So, like, okay, if they play on a Thursday and then they don't have an NCAA tournament game until the following Friday, it might be a little rusty. Forget fresh at that point so if i'm doing this though i'm completely chucking it i'm get if i'm doing this and greg sankey doesn't call me to complain then i haven't done it thoroughly enough i'm play i'm starting <laughs> you want to draw full attention to this oh yeah no 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 i'm starting the last in the first game of the sec tournament i'm starting the last five players on the bench see i was just going to say continue load management through the sec tournament because it doesn't matter. Like, don't try to win the SEC tournament, but I'm not saying throw the SEC tournament. I'm not sitting here saying rest all your starters. I'm saying th- I'm saying throw the SEC tournament. <laughs> okay. <They're- laughs> I mean, I've covered a lot of those, and there's so ma- – half the teams, if you pull the players aside, I mean, they're meaningless. It matters to Kentucky and really whoever hates Kentucky. And it's just – you know, you win the regular season, that's a lot more significant in my mind. So – uh, second down was what about the SEC tournament? I'm pretty much mailing it in. And Greg Sankey's going to call me on Friday and say, hey, this makes a lot of money for the conference. I'm like, I don't care. Uh, so these, these five guys at the end of the bench, they needed some time. <laughs> so I played Bob Jones and a guy named Alfred who you've never heard of. And if Greg Sankey has a problem with that, go to the NCAA and stop colluding with them to make the conference tournament so meaningless where they don't even factor it into seating with the selection committee. Make it matter Thank more. You. Thank you. And you said the S word. What about seeding? Seeding. This is where you and I may differ. I would not at all do load management through the rest of the regular season pre-SEC tournament. I would get the best seed possible. Tennessee's floating around a three or a four right now. If they keep playing like they're playing, they're going to find themselves in a 7-8 matchup or a 9-10 I would do n- no load management up until the SEC tournament when I mail it in. How about you? No, I do load management. Now, again, I think we're talking different things with load management. You're thinking load management as just play it's rest everybody and play the backups. My load management is capital L, capital O, capital A, capital D. That's my <laughs> load management. And I'm not even joking about the SEC tournament. I'm not doing this for See, the Zaz or anything. My load management is not that. My load management is, okay, you do a rotation. Santi and, and uh, Zakai are going to sit today. Olivia and Ross are going to sit tomorrow. I, my, my thing is you rest different starters for different days, but you're still trying to win the games, and you're still somewhat in a rhythm. And I would apply it evenly for the SEC tournament and the regular season because that's a combination of it, – it'll keep you – my way will keep you as fresh as your way, but on top of that, it's it's you're not really throwing any regular season. My so, way, you get a week off. You yes, but Dave, you get a week off, but that long off could actually hurt your rhythm when you come into the NCAA oh, tournament. Oh yeah, possibly. But if if you improve your seating and you're a two versus a fifteen, I think a one's out of the question at this point. But if you're a two versus a fifteen, you should win that, and get back in your rhythm. Uh, Smoky Mountain Red says. Uh, either <clears throat> do not have the tournament or uh, just call them the regular season champs. Amen. The SEC tournament, <clears throat> if you're a basketball fan outside of the ACC where it really matters, you should feel taken advantage of because the SEC tournament is all about a money grab. It's the most blatant money grab in all of college athletics. No, oh, I, I agree. I agree. And by the way, what we're talking about here, guys, what we're talking about here. We're not far away from this possibly happening in football. You know, when you go to a 12-team playoff, 
And you go to the S if you go to the SEC championship game and you already know you're in the playoff, why would you risk injury playing that extra week of football? The 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 argument against that, and you're we're closer than people think, I agree, is that you can improve your seating and you can have a home game or potentially have a bye. So that would at least be the argument against that. The other thing, if you go halfway in football, you're going to get blown up. So you can't really go halfway. I mean, if you start playing the last 11 on a football bench, those guys are going to need stretchers <laughs> to get off the field. I mean, you can't you can't do it. You can't play football halfway. There's zero way. Go with do what Red Boy you did in Waterboy. Just take a knee every time on <laughs> on offense. <laughs> It's probably a matter of time till that happens. All right, so th- th- there I am. I'm chucking the SEC tournament. See, but the, I, here's what your way does. Can I tell you what your way does real quick? Okay, think it about, gets people fresh and wins NCAA tournament <laughs> games. That's what no, it does. Think about working out. Okay, you you like to work out, right? I love to work out. Okay, is it better for you? Oh, you're trying. Say you're trying to stay fresh for like a marathon. Okay, say you're staying fresh for a marathon. Is it better for you to rigorously and massively and overtrain for three weeks and then take the last the last full week off before the marathon or is it good for you to like just regularly kind of manage your amount of training to where you are still healthy and in a rhythm but you're not too tired to run the marathon uh well i think uh, josh ward our friend at the sports animal in knoxville he ran a marathon for charity proves he's a better man than me and I do think you – he told me you take, like, the week off before, I thought. Is that not right? The full don't week, you, you don't work out at all? You do no physical activity? I'm not 100% sure. Maybe somebody can help us on the message board. Now, you're talking to the wrong guy because I love lifting weights, and it's kind of my um, – yeah, <laughs> somebody said, I just don't run marathons. Easy fix. Uh, you're talking to the wrong guy because load management of the gym doesn't work for me. I've got an app that I could actually show you. And I get, I, I've been so obsessed with, with lifting over the past couple of years that I, I can actually show you the, the muscles that it says I should work out. So check out this. Okay. Every one of them is below 80%. So basically it's telling me don't use that muscle today, but I'm going to go do it anyway. So I'm the wrong person to ask, but I, I don't you, do you lose rhythm in basketball? Yeah, a little bit. But can't you just, I don't know, if you play one game in the NCAA tournament, when's the first game now? Because they've, they've changed it. It used to always be Thursday. If they, well, unless you're in a play-in, it's on a Thursday. There's those play-ins on Tuesday and Wednesday. I'm, I'm sorry, I misspoke. SEC tournament. Oh, SEC. It's, uh, the first game's on a Wednesday. Tennessee's not going to be there on a Wednesday. They're not going to be one of the bottom two teams in the SEC. Or bottom okay. four. Okay. So you play... On a Thursday, mm-hmm. and you might win just because you're so much better. But Friday, man, it's bottom of the bench. It is. It is. I mean, you want to show up. What you're trying to do is show up the SEC for how stupid. Yes, that's, that's exactly I know. what I'm trying to do. And I it was like the end of the NBA All Star Game, chucking forty footers, just make a complete. You know who did this up. one time. So in the NBA, Greg Popovich uh, was really mad about the scheduling. Remember when the Spurs and the Heat played each other in two straight NBA finals and the Heat won the first time and the Spurs were looking for revenge the next time. The Spurs were actually ahead of Kawhi, right? Uh, With load management, I think. Yes, yes, I think they were. They started that with that. That's why Tim Duncan extended his career. But yeah, what they did, this was hilarious. The NBA had like given the Spurs like a six games in 11 day stretch, like four straight on the road. And their last one was a second of a back-to-back at the Heat, where they given the Heat a massive rest. And it was totally set up by David Stern for LeBron and D-Wade to blow out the Spurs, you know what I mean, with how on national TV. So Greg Popovich was like, all right, I'm, I'm resting all my stars. And he rested Tim Duncan, Kawhi Leonard, Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili. And he's like, none of them are playing. And it was a blatant attempt to show up the NBA for a nationally televised game for the fact that they did that. And it was, I think they actually got fined for it. And I think he, I think they did. I think I remember that. Please hit that like button. That brings more people in. We greatly appreciate it. And it's brought to you by Craft Treats. That's today's tough question. Craft Treats, there's no tough question when it comes to 
craft treats craft treats can take care of your pet with their chill pills cbd in there to take care of digestive issues also they'll be able to take care of arthritis and anxiety as my dog has that because uh the fox sin foxes plural uh in my yard like to scream and um yeah so that is something that uh, craft treats is able to take care of with their chill pills they also have all kinds of treats and uh, they are fantastic four downs brought to you by craft treats go to crafttreats.com use the promo code off the hook that's off the hook get 20 percent off so that's pretty cool fourth down what about the mindset do you affect a team's mindset i kind of think this plays a little bit into the rhythm thing uh, but if you've got a mature team and i think tennessee does you're you're able to adjust and i think tennessee could adjust i don't think that they're going to play poorly in the ncaa tournament just because you use load management blow up the sec tournament as i suggest yeah if you do it my way my question would be i mean here's my thing when people complain about it baseball for a hundred years now pitchers have been on a rotation every five games do they have a poor mindset when they hit the mlb playoffs because of that of course not and so I mean, I know that's a little bit of a different scenario, but the idea that you don't have the mindset to go all out, anybody who thinks that is go back and watch T.O. in that Super Bowl in 2005, came back from a broken leg to play the Patriots, and if Donovan McNabb had not, I believe, gotten drunk the night before and been hung over in the Super Bowl and thrown up in the huddle, they might have actually won that game. Um, Wow. I hadn't heard that theory. He threw up in the huddle, and some people say he was nervous, and others say he was hung over. I watched a documentary on Bill Russell last night, and Bill Russell threw up before every game. Starting quarterback at my high school threw up before every game. Sometimes he would be under center, and he would lift up his face mask, literally with his hands under center, and turn to the right and vomit. Other times he didn't have enough time on the clock to get his face, his chin strap unbuckled and his face mask up, so he just puked through the face mask. Oh, gosh. (laughs) <laughs> Wasn't that a, who was it for Tennessee that the offensive lineman that threw up against Alabama this past year and then like pointed at the elevator? Was that Darnell Wright that did that? It was either Darnell Wright or it was Darnell Wright making fun of Jerome Carvin for doing it. Okay. I can't remember, but they pointed at the Alabama line and they're like, this is for you. <laughs> like to show their toughness. Yeah. And I did say Foxen, Travis. I did indeed. Indeed. <laughs>